so the importance of mentorship and mentoring, you know, it's like, it's one of those things which a lot of people talk about, um, bandy around has been important, but not an awful lot of people do it actually is one of the things that I've discovered, um, which is kind of strange. Um, but I think that's a lot of time that's because they've never, um, been in a situation to grab it with both hands and, um, realize quite how um, empowering it can be um, to have somebody um, believe in you, somebody that's got your back. Um, uh, so that's what I want to talk about today. Um, and you know, like when, when there is somebody that believes in you, who you consider to be of, um, of great value in life, you respect them, you, you, um, you're really blown away by what they do, how they do it. And you also can kind of imagine yourself that you would like to be in that situation too. Um, it's actually a, an, a fantastic thing. It's really a super thing to behold actually, um, uh, because you sort of future vision where you'd like to be, um, you know, and that, that comes from, from, from where you want to be in life really. So I want to talk about when I was a lot younger, and um, so the story goes, but hi, auto service uh, in Driti, wherever that is on Instagram. Hi. Um, so the life story I want to talk about is um, I'm going to go back a long way here and um, and and talk about when I became a teacher uh, initially. Uh, Danny, hi there. Uh, so <clears throat> so going back a long time now, I'm now 50. Uh, but I want to go back to my 20s. Um, so back in the 90s, I had um, I'd come out of the, the military. I'd been in the military for a few years. And uh, and despite the training, which was great, I was learning how to, well, I learned how to service helicopters of all things. Uh, so I was had an electronics background. Um, uh, but I found I was never really that suited to the military. I was far too creative. I had far too many ideas of my own, far too entrepreneurial looking back on it. So I didn't last a great deal of time. But when I came out of that, I was uh, I was working in bands. And um, by the way, if you can see this, just drop a like or a wave or something. It really helps to know if, if anyone's there so I can just say hello to you guys. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I came out of this, this out of the military and I was kicking around in bands and I was doing some work in some studios, helping fix studios lifting the lids off mixing desks and figuring out what was wrong and looking at wiring looms and all the plumbing and stuff, electrical plumbing. Um, and I was in this band with a, with a music, uh, a music teacher and he was, uh, what I would say a prolific musician. Um, I was merely like 24, 23, 24. Uh, and I was in a, I suppose a dark place. I was in a kind of a dark place actually at the time, you know, because I was like, what am I going to do in my life? I'm in my early twenties. Um, I just come out of the career of the military because that wasn't suited to me. And I think, you know, like, what am I going to do? Um, and I know I wanted to do something related to music at the time anyway, but I wasn't really doing an awful lot. I was doing a bit of guitar teaching a little bit there, a little bit of studio servicing, but I got into this band, which was a working band. And, um, and this guy was much older than me. He was a good 20 years older than me. He'd, uh, and he'd recently quit uh, a guy by the name of Bob, actually. And he'd recently quit teaching to concentrate full time on his band. Uh, and I was in the band with him and I was, um, I was okay at playing guitar, but I was, you know, it wasn't amazing, but I was, I had a good idea and I could read a little bit of music. And this guy was a prolific reader and he was a, in a working band. Now in a working band, it's sort of band whereby you get given the sheet of music on the way to the gig, you know, like we were in the, in the van on the way to a gig and you'd say, Hey Chris, we're going to play this tonight. I'd be like, Oh my God, how can I do this? This is like daunting task, like, um, incredibly daunting, uh, to learn and sort of almost sight read this stuff. Um, but anyway, I did that for, for a good six to seven, eight months. We were working all over the country in this band and he was about to start, uh, teaching again, have, having had his uh, year out at a local college. And, uh, and he said, Chris, I'm going to start up some sound engineering courses and I'd like you to come and teach for me, teach, you know, like, and, uh, <laughs> I said, 
what like sorry did i hear you right you want me to come and be a teacher at the local college I'm like, young in my 20s like 23 24 i said no forget about it I, like i've never done that i don't know how to do it i would just i was full of like why would you even ask me um and i think at the time looking back he he you know, I used to talk about things in the studio with him about like how a, an effect pedal works for a guitar or how the mixing desks work. And I think he understood quite early on that I had higher lacquer, lacari, is it? Uh, lacquer, Larry. Uh, and I think he understood quite early on that I had a knack for uh, what I would call synthesizing um, quite complex subjects into layman's terms and explaining them to people, which is obviously a good trait of teachers um and also i i could and he found it quite motivating you know so um anyway he persisted and persisted and persisted forever and uh, i don't know how many times he came to see me and um i i eventually caved in i said okay i'll give it a go and he actually and i looking back on it he, he saw something in me which uh which i didn't i just didn't know at the time that i had in me you know um but I had nothing else to do, so I thought I'd give it a go. So I went along to the uh, first day of college, and I can remember, remember walking in the first day of college, never had teaching qualifications or any experience of this, to a, to a room full of students who were there for their, 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 their city and guilds, their state-verified qualification. And I'm there at the front to, to, to introduce them. Hello, guys, I'm your teacher. And, uh, and I was just, like, crapping myself, you, you know, like unbelievable fear um anyway after the first hour and a half i started to really get into it and, and and liked it and i sensed that there was a good vibe in the um in the classroom and and i and i think being a musician as well you get to used to being in front of people um and you can kind of get to read an audience uh and i could read um i could read their vibe you know and their emotions and like it was a great feeling and actually after that day of teaching i was absolutely wiped out but it, i really enjoyed it it was like incredibly rewarding uh anyway to cut a very long story short i stuck with it um and and i'm glad i did because to blow my own trumpet i actually um was really good at that teaching and i took to it like a like a duck takes to water and it, and it really suited me uh, and, um, so the first year we started off with like, I think 20 part-time students anyway, by after two or three, four years, we were up to like 150 students full-time, three or four different qualifications. And what I discovered was that I was, uh, uh, an entrepreneurial academic, entrepreneurial trainer, teacher. Um, and I was writing courses. I started authoring courses. Um, and the point the, the point is that um he was a mentor to me you know and and i didn't realize it at the time i just didn't understand that he could see something in me which i obviously couldn't um, and, I, and i think that's what makes a good mentor and i think it it works for us when we're able to embrace that and embrace our fears and that's what i've done ever since then and in actual fact that was a monumental uh milestone in my career because after that i uh i i ended up teaching in like in universities and became a university lecturer i authored degrees uh up to undergraduate level and also master's level uh and i along the way i thought i better take this a bit seriously um so i after a few years i enrolled straight into a master's course myself which was in online education uh, and I studied that part time for three years. And at the end of that um, three year studying process of being a student online, and I, this is like back in um, you know, like 99, 2000, you know, um, and for my thesis, I developed an online school. So you can, ima <laughs> you can imagine, right? And this was an online school for teaching people how to make records because I'd had, uh, you know, good six years by then in the industry of teaching and, and qualifications and stuff and also practicing being a musician and a studio guy and I launched my online school and um and you can imagine back in the year 2000 2001 if you talk someone says what do you do or you you say well I do some teaching but I've also for my thesis which I ran for the first year um 
I, I did this online school. And then after the thesis, I kept it running and started charging people money to take the courses. And like back in 2000, 2001, if you mentioned the idea that it's an online school, people were like, what? You know, like, I mean, this was like back in the days of modems when you connect up through a phone with a little modem making squeaky noises. It was like, what are you talking about an online school? It was rocket science, right? So I was like an early adopter of, of creating online courses and an online community. Uh, and that's what my master's was all about. Uh, anyway, I, so I ran, that, um, I ran that school for um, eight years. Uh, I moved to different parts of the world. I ended up living in Italy for a number of years, playing rugby for Milan in Italy. You know, I had an amazing time because I was working from anywhere. I was geographically independent, a, a nomad almost. It doesn't, didn't matter where I was. I chose Italy because I liked it. Um, and then uh, to cut another long story short, after running it for eight years, somebody came along and wanted to buy it. Uh, so I, I sold the school. I mean, at first, when someone came along and said, we want to buy your school, I was like, and I, I was disbelief. I just couldn't believe somebody was like wanted to buy it. And um, and uh, anyway, it came along at the right time because I started having children with my wife, and we needed a we needed a house, uh, so I sold it. And um, and since then, I've been been consulting uh, because after, having run an, an online business for eight years, you really get an idea of how to how to market and how to work online and be a consultant for other people. So I started doing what I did for my school uh, and all those skills that I'd learned, I started doing that for other businesses. And that's when I really started earning um, serious amounts of money, um, you know, five figures a month quickly, easily, you know, six figures a year. I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was a lot of money. Um, anyway, so the point I'm telling you this is, um, I somebody saw something in me um, all the way back in my early 20s that I had no idea was there. Uh, so I'm incredibly thankful for that guy, Bob, you know, um, rest his rest his soul. He, he, he passed away a number of years ago. But I it, it's it's fundamentally important to realize when those milestones are staring you in the face, you know, and um, I, I and I took a lot of persuasion to be to be mentored, and and it wasn't officially called mentorship. He he was just there, and like any time I needed something or couldn't understand something, I'd go to him asking the question. And looking back, it was just mentorship. He was just he was just helping me through life, and that's that's the amazing sign of a teacher. You know, if you can find people like that in life who are willing to spend time with you and uh, and mentor you through skills, mentor you through a new career and help you they really are to be embraced um you know f fully you know um because they don't come along very often actually these that's what i've learned as well these opportunities where someone's willing to say look i will help you because i can see something in you i will invest my time um and perhaps you'll pay me for that um and i will i will take you through a mentor you and uh, so that's what i do now i, I spend a lot of time with people that I think I can help. Um, and actually helping people first, make, primarily making your number one goal to assist people and help people is is incredibly rewarding. It's more than anything else because I think if you do that, and that's what I've always done since that first mentorship, that unofficial mentorship with that guy that was, um, hi there, Manny, uh, Karen's joined. Hi, guys. Um, I've always learned from that i've learned that if i i learned from him he gave 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 told me every taught me everything and i learned from him that that's the way that you create value in life and if you do that if you give you constantly give to people you help other people business takes care of itself business will come to you finance will come to you because you adopt a, 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 an abundance mindset of giving to people because and it's all about giving back you know and that's where you'll be successful you don't have to become a cheesy salesperson anymore because if you're constantly giving and educating people, business will come to you. You attract people. You become magnetic. Um, and that's what I've learned over the years of the importance of that mentorship, that unofficial mentorship that I had from that guy, Bob. Um, because, quite frankly, all of the success that, it, that I've had in, in business since then has been a result of that mindset. It, it's 
It's knowing that someone's there for me, um, you know, and he would say things sometimes to me that like, I was thinking like, why would I want to do that? That's like, not a great idea. That's, but I would try anyway. And sure enough, you know, he was older, he was wiser. Uh, he'd done it. He'd been through it already. And he, he knew the pathway, which that I should have taken. Uh, so I did. And um, so that's what I've done. And even, you know, after that, when I was running my online school, and then also with consultancy, I seek out other people continuously who I think um, will benefit me some way in life. Um, and that's never related to finance. I'm not hunting around for people that are loaded with money. I'm hunting around for people that have a very, very positive mindset, people that like to achieve things, people that don't waste time, uh, people that are productive, efficient, uh reasoned um reflect uh, but are very very highly focused so i'm always craving people like that in my life because i know it works and i know that people like that are valuable they're valued valuable to me because it helps me to continue growing i mean like i'm 50 i was 50 this year right but and i had this epiphany that actually like i've had uh two businesses that i've grown and sold i've got another successful business up and running and I've also got the social media ma social media mafia dot com academy, uh, which is new, um, but it's great. Got a lovely community building, and you guys are watching this, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, but the point is, um, I'm 50 now, but I feel like I'm only just beginning. You know what I mean? It's like, it like you're never too old, you're never too young. It's just wherever you are in your mindset right now is it, it, that's where it's going to work. If you embrace opportunity, if you grab it by the, with both hands, it's yours, you know, and, and, and mostly what I find is it's not all about this stuff. It's not about tactical stuff. It's not about technique necessarily. Um, it's, it's 80%, if not 90% in the mind, in the head. It's just mindset. It's looking at your fears and dealing with your fears. It's looking at negativity that might be in your life and actually putting it into a box and thinking that's negative there. So I can do something with that. It's, it's not going to affect me. I can process that. And it's looking at the areas of your mind whereby you control your mind to be who you are. I tell you a great book that goes into a lot of stuff about this is by a guy called, um, I mean, I read a lot of self-development books and I've done that for a number of years now. Uh, and I find them incredibly useful. Um, one of them is by a guy called Professor Steve Peters. Um, uh, it's called The Chimp Paradox. Uh, and he splits the mind up into three things mainly, which is simplified. But there's three main aspects. One is the human. And the human is, is, is what I like to think. I'm kind of like being a human now. I'm explaining me, what my values are. I'm being honest. I'm being transparent. It's what I want to achieve in life. It's where I want to go in life. The other aspect is and that, so the human is really related to your values deep values your core values what you believe in what you believe to be right and, and how you see the world the other one is the computer which is like the program which fires all those responses out based on your human instinct and what you feel and the other side is the chimp which is the massive emotional uh, mind the reactive one Okay, it just it, it gets scared because it's in front of a person never seen before. And it's like, who's that person? You get into chimp mode, um, you know, like and that chimp needs managing. All right. And like and mostly it's the chimp in our lives which prevents us from progressing and achieving things because the chimp is like someone on your shoulder saying, no, you don't want to do that. No, that's not going to work. And it's constantly there. So. This book is all about developing strategies to manage it. You can't suppress the chimp. It's powerful and it's useful. You just need to manage it and have strategies to manage that chimp so that you can use it to the best of your advantage to achieve what you want as a human. Um, I'm not going to go into any further detail than that, but just to say that mindset is fundamentally important. And I, and I, and, and I can't stress how important it is with, with men deciding if you want to go on board with a mentor. Um, or not uh and and it's and it's about embracing uh, embracing the opportunities in front of you and and getting over the fear and, it, and it's not even getting over it's just managing it and using it productively um 
so that that's the story of Bob, uh, who was an unofficial mentor. He never ever said to me, Chris, I'm your mentor. It was it was, dude, I, I really like your guitar playing in the band. That's all cool. But do you want to come and teach? And I was like, what are you talking about? And the chimp was like saying, no, no, I can't teach. That's not going to work. Like, and the, the chimp was saying, no, no, no. And eventually, after a period of time, like I said, he, he persisted. And I said, okay, I'll give it a go. And the rest is history. So it was about embracing those fears. And I've often found that in life, that um, fear is... the we all get scared of stuff right but actually the other side of fear once the event has happened let's say it's lose your job you're like you know like the other side of it is actually not as bad as we think it is the outcome is not that bad um it's the same with business opportunities i had a conversation with someone yesterday a close friend and they were like oh i'm not gonna make this contract you know it's not i said well fine if you don't make the contract business opportunities are like buses and, and she said what do you mean like i said well there's always another one coming around the corner, you know, like there's, there's always another business opportunity around the corner that you can, that will probably be more aligned to you. Um, so I think it's fundamentally important that you, that you approach life uh, w with that kind of mindset that you, in actual fact, you know, I talk about working on the business um, and building it with techniques and stuff, but, fundamentally it's a, more about working on on us as a you it's about uh improving us as a human improving us uh you know our outlook our vision our values and stripping away the things that are are, are not important to us to where we want to go to those are the fundamental things i think which which aid you to get where you want to get in life um and as i said if you have that mentality of wanting to improve yourself to, to be the best you can actually be um, i mean another great another great quote um and and actually we've got this quote as one of our 24 25 code of conduct uh statements in the social media mafia.com academy is uh, always um, whatever you are whatever you're doing always be the best vision the best version uh of you so always imagine whatever you're doing that somebody's there watching you someone's there looking at you and never do anything that that you wouldn't do if someone was there watching you you know you're always trying to maximize yourself you're always trying to be the best you can absolutely be and as i said i i think fundamentally the whole becoming a so you know being a social media consultant which is what this group's about which is what social media mafia.com is about becoming a social media co uh, consultant is not anything to do with hashtags on instagram it's not how often you post on pinterest or what you do on tiktok it's not the strategies it it's it's being a good you the best you an improved you week after week it's all about mindset um Sure, we've got structures in place to tell you what you need to do and templates and scripts in order to make sales. Um, but those things are only going to work if it feels comfortable and if they're aligned with where you want to be as a person. Like, and I, you know, like, and I cannot emphasize how important that is um, because you've got to get out of bed every day and really relish what you want to do. You've got to be loving it. It's got to be like the best thing ever, you know, like, I mean, sure, it can't be like that every day, but you, you really got to be wanting, right, what can I do today that's going to make me a better person? How can I achieve it? The Italians, all right, have a great phrase. I learned this when I lived in Italy. Um, and it's a beautiful phrase. They have a phrase called la bella figura. Now, literally translated, it means a beautiful figure. Like you would say, oh, la bella figura. She cuts a beautiful figure or he cuts a beautiful, uh, he cuts a beautiful figure or he walks nicely or he dances well or it's a nice car, you know, but, but fundamentally they, 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 they use it in a wider context to mean if you're in any situation, um, say you're eating at the table, knife and forks and stuff, you always try to aim in life to leave the situation in a more beautiful way than that, than when you found it. Now, like, I mean, I find that a beautiful thing, right? you like, it's, it, that's spreading magic everywhere you go. Like if you can add some magic, you can add more beautifulness in every area of your life or every day, whatever you do, that's an amazing thing to live by. You know, it's like 
because good things happen. Like, you know, you become a very likable person. People like that, you know. Um, the opposite of that is just leaving the dinner plates there and the knife and forks, oh, I can't be bothered walking on, you know. No one likes that, you know. Like, so it's it's all about that bella, that, la, la bella figura, you know. And that's what I try to do in life, as I said before. Try to approach that mindset and uh, always improve in some way and add something which is missing. Um, lots of people join here on Instagram. Hi guys, nice to see you. And I think there's more in uh, Facebook. Tabby, nice to see you here. Um, so look, um, it, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm not going to talk forever here, but because uh, it's getting late in the UK. But bo go back and watch this because it's there's a lot of things in here which I've touched on, which which are fundamental to becoming a, a social media consultant. And quite honestly, as I've said so many times before, to get up to five figures a month as a social media consultant is way, way simpler and easier than a lot of people think. I mean, it, it's 80% mindset. It's 20% uh, process. Uh, you need good processes behind it, which is why we have templates and scripts in the academy. It tells you what to say, how to say it. But it's really about retraining your brain and your outlook and your delivery and your persona and your mindset to put yourself in that situation of being a confident consultant and have a conversation with another human being that's got the problem that needs fixing. And if you do your your, your target market correctly and your research correct you will find people that will pay you two grand a month to do their uh their social media their marketing their digital stuff for you there's businesses everywhere that will pay that because it's far cheaper than employing somebody and they're getting much more expertise because you're working at the front line on it so it's quite simple to get to 10k easily it's not as difficult as people think and so many people get wrapped up in the in the technicals, in the hash, the hashtags on Instagram, you know, like how often should I post this and the other? Like, it's all about getting business. It's all about getting clients that you want to work with that like you. You have a good relationship. It's a it's it's a two way thing. You're improving as a person. You're giving. They're gaining. You know, the the work side of it. A lot of it you can outsource, as I said in last week's uh, show. So look, guys. If you get the opportunity to be mentored and someone comes along like this, um, and, you know, here, here's a pitch perhaps. I hadn't really thought about this until now, but I think I will be offering some mentorship um, to get people to 10K a month. Um, and I will charge for that because I'm going to have to invest time um, to get people there. Uh, but I'll but keep keep an eye out in the group for those notifications because i really want to start giving back in a, in, in a much more meaningful way it, you know i think the academy is great and we're refining it and there's so much value in there and i hope some of you are finding finding that too but fundamentally um some people really do need to be handheld and and guided and i totally get that because that's um how i've uh, how my career you know sort of kicked off uh, with my first mentor in my early 20s. And, and it was, you know, it's been life changing, actually. Uh, anyway, so guys, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I've been on a half an hour. It's enough. It's, it's 1030 in UK. So uh, by all means, please just drop hashtags, uh, replay, if you're watching this on the replay. Um, um, I really do appreciate you participating in these. It's, it's wonderful. Um, and uh, and I, I really do enjoy it. I love giving back to you guys and um, helping out where I can. So um, cool. I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Um, if you've got any questions, please post them in the comments. Um, that might be just a, a good idea just before I, I sign off. Um, or, or again, if you're on the replay, just put, bunch, bunch some questions in as well because I will get to them uh, and answer them. And that interaction is also uh, really good for the both of us. Hi, there's more people on Instagram here. Sony Dental, uh, Kubril, I don't know. Wow, there's some amazing names here. Tabriz, uh, Manny. Nice to see you all, guys. Um, cool. Mm. Okay, so um, thanks ever so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Love your attention. Um, if you've got any ideas for further subjects, please let me know. 
Uh, more than happy to cover them. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Uh, watch out for the notifications about uh, mentorship, if that's something that interests you. Um, because, uh, like I said, getting to 10K a month is not as difficult as you think if you follow the process. And you're willing to be... Um, you're willing to have your mind open to different ways of doing things because the, 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 the ways that work for a lot of people now, probably if you're not earning 10 K already, they're probably never going to work. Are they? So they probably need to be changed uh, with a different mindset. All right, guys, thanks ever so much. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Uh, do drop some comments. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.